Hey, what's going on, man? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a Kubernetes cluster on a couple of different virtual machines here using MicroKates or MicroKates, however you wanna say it. So the benefit of that is MicroKates is like a really small packaged installation method for Kubernetes, and it applies a lot of sensible defaults that get you up and running quickly without having to do a lot of deep dive configuration for your Kubernetes cluster. So let's go jump into it. All right, first things first, this is DevOps for Developers. I'm Will Button, and this video is on installing Kubernetes, and this is a choose your own adventure video. So we're gonna install Kubernetes, our Kubernetes cluster here. And then at the end, you're gonna have a couple of options on where you wanna go with this newfound knowledge. So first things first, I am SSH'd into my virtual machines here. I've got four different uh, virtual machines running on Hyper-V and with CentOS 8 installed. And so I've got the controller and then we're gonna have three nodes that actually do the work of our Kubernetes cluster. Um, I also have multi-input terminal going here. So whenever I type the commands in one terminal, it broadcasts that to the other virtual machines just so I don't have to type things multiple times. Um, to install MicroKates, the first thing we need is the snap package manager. So I'm gonna use the DNF command and install snapd, and then that's gonna do its thing. So if you're not familiar with SnapD, it's a package manager that works on a whole bunch of different types of operating systems. Um, I got mixed feelings on it, but that's the way we get microcates, so that's the way we're gonna go. All right, so that was complete. The next thing we need to do is enable the SnapD service. We'll do that with system control, enable, dash dash now, snapd.socket. All right, that's done. So one thing you need to do, um, coming up here in just a second, we're gonna install micro Kate and it uses the dash dash classic flag. So in order for that to work, we need to create a symlink. So we'll do that with the ln command dash s for symlink. And we're gonna link var lib snapd snap to forward slash snap. So now when we do a little listing of our root directory there, you can see we have our newly created snap directory. And if we do a long listing, you can see that it is a sim link pointing to var lib snapd snap. Don't know why that's necessary, but it is. All right, so we're gonna use our snap command and do snap install micro s dash dash classic. I'm assuming the classic flag means that it comes old school with like spinning rims and uh, fuzzy dice hanging from the rear view mirror. So I've seen this error message a couple times before, too early for operation. I don't really know what's driving it, but I do know to get around it, if we just reinstall snapd, and then run our snap install again, it works. Don't know what's behind that. I'll do some research later, see if we can figure it out. But for now, that keeps us going. So our installation was successful. And so now it's time to start bringing everything up. Um, before we do that though, let's take a look at this because these nodes have to be able to talk to each other. So, now I've already done this, but you're gonna need to do it on your own here. We need to open up the ports that are used by MicroKates and Kubernetes so that the nodes can talk with the controller, right? Now I went to the documentation and they've got a page here dedicated to the ports that you need to open on your different, um, on your different servers, right? So there's actually two, there's the ones that get exposed on the host interface or externally exposed. 
and then the services that bind to the local interface. So now there's two tempting approaches to doing this. Um, one is to find the ports that you need to open and then run the command to open those ports. So it's firewall CMD um, zone is equal to public because we want those externally exposed permanent so that they're still open after we reboot our server and then we add port and then you specify whatever port you need. So for instance, 25,000 and that's TCP versus UDP. So that's one way of doing it. The more tempting way to do that, however, is to just turn off the firewall, which is a bad idea, right? Um, but that's sometimes the way to go. Now, had I not been able to find the documentation showing which ports I needed open, that's probably the route I would have taken, but that wouldn't have been the final step, right? Because if you don't know what ports you need to open, you're gonna spend a ton of time trying to get this thing up and running, and you're gonna be battling this scenario of it not working. Well, is it not working because of a configuration issue, or is it not working because the right ports open or is not open on the firewall. And so it leads to a lot of frustration in try, trying to get this set up. So what I will often do in those scenarios is turn the firewall off, get it up, get it running, make sure it works like it's supposed to, and then work my way backwards to figure out which firewall ports need to be open, open those ports up, turn the firewall back on, test it, make sure it works, and then delete everything and try to reinstall it with just those ports open to make sure I haven't overlooked anything. It's a lot longer that way, so it's really, really nice that on their website here, they just told us right up front, hey, open these ports. So, moving on. So we've got our micro Kates installed, so we should be able to type um, with correct spelling, micro Kates dash. I think it's just status here. And the command's not found. We can fix that. We created our forward slash snap directory, right? And so now if we look in there, there's a bin folder, and that's where our command is. So we can update our path here. We can do path is uh, equal to the current path plus snap bin. And now let's do microcate status again. And it is running. Let's verify that's the case for all of these nodes. Yep, that one's running. And that one's running. And that one is running. All right, cool. Now, one of the things about microcates that it does is it's just got a wrapper around the cube control command. So let me turn off the multi-terminal input there and let's do micro -cates. So now we can just run our cube control command and then get nodes. And so here's my little controller node all alone, all by itself. Let's fix that. So we'll do micro -cates add node. And it tells us if you want to join the cluster, just run this command. And you can see right here, if I can highlight that, there we go. There's where one of those ports that we need open comes into play because this is the IP address of my controller that we're currently on. This is the TCP port that the other nodes need to connect to to join the cluster. So we'll come over to this one, our node one, and it's gonna do its thing. So here's one of the things I discovered in playing with this, getting ready to do this video. Um, that token or that command that it just gave us is only valid one time. So I can't use that on the other nodes. In addition to that, it seems like I can only join one node at a time. So I've got node one here trying to join and I have to wait for that to complete before I can join another one, which um, it does have me questioning like, 
how enterprise grade is this? What if I needed to build a cluster of a hundred nodes? I can't really see me doing those one at a time, but then again, if I'm using something that has a hundred nodes on it, um, I've probably got other stuff in place anyways. So meanwhile, back over here on our screen, uh, it seems to have finished. So let's do uh, micro cates cube control get nodes. And there's node one ready to go. So let's do our add node command again. And we've got a different token. So we'll copy that, come over to node two, clear the screen for you, paste that in. All right, so I went ahead and did all of the nodes there and I just assumed that you didn't wanna watch me copy and paste the same command multiple times. But if we check out screen here, uh, doing get nodes shows that I have the controller, node one, node two, and node three up and running. So now here's kind of one of the cool things about micro -cates. So we need to add and enable some features, right? Let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna do micro -cates enable and I want the Kubernetes dashboard, right? Cause that's kind of cool. We gotta have DNS because it's just not gonna work well without DNS. Um, I love using Helm. So I want that in there. This is on my local network back over here. So I need Metal LB to provide load balancing services. Now, if you're running in Azure or GKE or AWS, you can use their cloud load balancer service, whatever it is for them. Um, Prometheus, definitely want that because we've got to have metrics. And then RBAC. And um, RBAC is role-based access control. You always want to use that in your Kubernetes environment so that whenever your things get hacked, because they're going to get hacked, then you can limit the, uh, the number of things that the attacker can do and the things that they have access to using good RBAC controls. And so to set all of those up in Kubernetes can be a pain, but with microcates, I just type the enable command and tell it what to do, hit the enter key, and we wait. And so during this installation process, like sometimes you need to provide some additional values. For example, for Metal LB, I have to tell it which IPs Metal LB owns that it can use for load balancing. And so it just pauses in the installation process here and, and asks me. So let's give it 192.168.100.10 and We'll cap that at 192.168.100.254. And it's like, cool, that's all I needed to know. And it goes back to doing its thing. And you can see on the screen here, it configures the nodes, it restarts them. It's just kind of taking care of everything in the background, which is really, really, really nice. All right, so now everything installed successfully. Let's clear this off the screen here. We'll run microcates. Cube control and then uh, get service. I think it's just service. Dash dash all dash name spaces. Yeah, I screwed that up, didn't I? Let's try that again. There we go. So now there's all of the services that are installed and running on our new Kubernetes service. Um, but there's a couple things that are wrong here, right? Um, first of all, that's a lot of crap to look at on the screen. And um, second, like to get that, like that command was just horribly long, right? I mean, I'll get carpal tunnel just trying to navigate my cluster. So here's what I do. Check this out. There's an application called K9S. And this is my favorite favorite, favorite Kubernetes tool, right? So you can install it on whatever you got. Enough with that, let me show you how it's done. So let's clear this out. And then I'm gonna do my micro -cates config, and that's gonna print out my kube config file for me, all right? 
So now if I open up another terminal here, remember on all of those other ones, I was SSH'd into a virtual machine. This, however, is my local workstation. And there's a cube.cube config file that tells my system how to talk to Kubernetes. Now mine has a bunch of other Kubernetes clusters in there and you can support multiple clusters in there. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this info here on the screen and add it to my local cube config and then we'll launch K9S and I'll show you a better way to look at your Kubernetes cluster. And after updating my cube config file, here is what K9S looks like. Check this out, this is super cool. Uh, we're looking at all the pods here for all the different namespaces. We can filter that to a specific namespace and if I actually give it focus there. Um, I like it because it has Vim style bindings so I can navigate up and down just using the J and K keys. If I wanna look at the logs, I can hit the L key and get the logs. So if we wanna see the different namespaces, I just start typing namespace and it gives you some autocomplete there, hit enter and it pulls them all up, which is much, much better than typing out those big, long, nasty Kubernetes commands. And so now that brings us back to you and it's decision time. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was a choose your own adventure. And now adventurer, it's time for you to choose. So where do you wanna go next? If you want to dig in to the Kubernetes components and learn more about what Kubernetes is and how we build stuff on it, click this video up here. If you wanna learn, if you actually want to see how to use Kubernetes and watch me install Jenkins and get Jenkins up and running on Kubernetes, click this video here. And if those arrows or videos aren't lining up to me pointing here and here, check the description below because I'm kind of winging it at this point, hoping that it works out and I'll see you in the next video.